I love it says in the book of Revelation, the apostle John, he said, I was on the Isle of Patmos in exile, in separation, and in misery, but I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So can we do that today? Come on, let's just lift our hearts. Let's just lift our hands. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you, God. Come on, I can't do it by myself. Lord, we praise you, oh God. God. We sing praise to your God. We sing praise to your God. We sing praise to your God. You are good and you're worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. We bow before you, God. You are the creator. You are the redeemer. You are the healer. You are the savior. You are the helper. You are the great I am. You are the beginning and the end. You are the alpha, the omega. We worship you, God. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Come on, church. Can we put our hands together in this place? Come on, you at home, put your hands together. I know we might have a mask and we might not be able to sing loud, but we can clap loud. Come on, let me help you. Come on. And let's lift our voice and let's sing this song together. You got to help me, church. Come on. I was buried beneath. My shame. Oh, come on, help me sing it out, church. Who could carry that kind of weight? Remember when it was my tomb? Come on, everybody, look up and tell them. Till I met. Oh, yeah. Somebody remember when? Come on. I was breathing. But not alive. All my failures I try to hide. Come on, sing it with me, church. It was my turn. Look up to heaven and just tell them. Till I'm here. <laughs> you called my name. Come on. Come out of that grave. Say, I've come out of that grave. Come on, at home, drop that in the chat today. Now let's sing about our new life. Now your mercy has saved. Come on, y'all got to help me. My soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. Come on, testify. Help me, church. The old you. Why? You call my name. I ran down that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You call my name. And I ran down that grave. Yes, I did. Sometimes it helps us to remember what it was like, to help us to appreciate what it is now. If you remember, let's sing, I know this was me. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I 
needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen. Come on, let's you sing it. I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. It's when you call my name. Come on, everybody sing. Come on. Your glorious day. Come on, you remember when? Come on, say. Your glorious day. Yeah, one more time. Shout it out. Come on. Your glorious day. Oh, yeah. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just rejoice in that today. That we are alive and well. He called our name. And you might be watching today. You might be with us today. And maybe you're still in darkness. Maybe you're still in the grave. Well, I got good news for you. He's calling your name. He's calling your name. He's calling your name. Just respond to that name and you can have this new life. Come on, let's sing. When darkness tries to roll over my bones. Come on, church, it's all awesome. When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. When brokenness and pain is all I know. Come on, you say it, church. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. Come on, everybody, come on. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear.
Praise the name of the Lord. If you're standing in his love, praise the name of the Lord. If fear is gone, captivity is gone, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I on, am standing Sing a song of thankfulness. Can we sing a song of thankfulness? Sing a song of faithfulness. Come on, can we take a moment right now and just sing it to the Lord and just minister unto Him? To give thanks, to give glory, to give honor to the name that has set us free, that has called us out of darkness. That has let us stand on his love. Can we say thank you, God? Can we say thank you, God? Can we say thank you, God? Come on, let's sing to him a song. Come on, let's sing to him a song. Sing to him a song from your spirit right now. Come on, just sing to him a melody. Sing to him your own melody. Sing to him your own words. Come on, this is your time. We've brought you this far. Now it's time for you to take over. Come on. We sing praise, 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 we sing praise. Come on, it's time to minister unto the Lord. How many times over the last few months have we cried out to God for help, for mercy, for guidance, for strength? I just feel in my spirit it's time to take a moment and just give God praise and give God thanks. So come on, let's do that. Let's do that. Come on, in your own words, in your own ways, what he's brought you through and what he's currently bringing you through. I understand that many of us are still in a storm. Come on, let's praise him anyway. Let's praise him. That's it. That's it. Fill this place. Fill this place with the praises of God. Fill your home. Fill your automobile. Fill your workplace, wherever you're watching this morning.
there's a lot of turmoil in our nation. Have your way. There's a lot of families that are fighting. Lord, have your way. We just break through the divisiveness of the enemy, Lord. Have your way. Lord, our land is broken. We need healing. Have your way. Lord, our hearts are heavy and we're weary. Have your way. Lord, we're confused and we don't know what to do. We're tired, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the Lord Jesus Jesus oh, I'm t- I- I want to move on, but I just can't. Come on, let us just stay right here. Oh, we're tired of doing it our way. We're tired of doing it our way, Lord. Cry out to you. Cry out to you. Cry out to you, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name, Lord. 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 That's it. Come on, that's it. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Just love on the church. Just love on us. love on him. Just love on him in this moment. His presence is here. His presence is here in this place and I know he's home with you that are watching. This is the Lord's day and he is with his people right now. The Lord is walking up and down the aisles. The Lord is here. There's a sweet, sweet sense of his presence all around the spirit of God is here he's walking down the
agree with that, say, we welcome you, Lord. If you agree with that, welcome them into your family, say, we welcome you, Lord. Lord, we pray that for our nation. We pray that for our homes, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. We pray that for our community, Lord. We pray for our society, God. We welcome you, Lord. Sing it together. Come on. We welcome you, Lord. Come on, if you agree with that, just sing with all your heart. Come on, say. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Lord. Father, thank you for your word. Just pray your blessing upon our heart and our time together. Whenever and whoever is watching this service, I pray you be a blessing, God. Help us to, to uh, overcome this thing today, God. That it's a huge test and it's a very difficult thing for all of us uh, to do, and that is to forgive the unforgivable sometimes. So bless our time together as we talk about forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen or oh boy. So that's what I wanted to get to today. But first, we left off last week with an Amalekite standing there at the end of Saul's life, holding Saul's crown. And uh, what had happened is Saul didn't obey God and uh, eliminate the Amalekites. And it ended up coming back around to cost him dearly. And we talked about how the very things in our lives that when God puts his finger on in our life, and whether it's an attitude or a weight or a sin or an issue or an attitude, we need to deal with it, not for his sake, but for our sake, because it will come around and sabotage our destiny. How many remember that last week? And that's exactly what happened to King Saul. He thought he would do it his way. He had a better idea, and his enemy stole his crown. Let me just say it like this. He didn't steal it. Saul he committed, he, he fell on his own sword, and he took himself out of the game. And, let me, and I just want, wanted to encourage you, don't commit spiritual suicide in 2020. Hear me today. Don't commit spiritual suicide in 2020. Don't give up. Hold fast to what you have until the end, in Jesus' name. Hold fast to that crown. Hold fast to what we've been believing for. Hold fast to what we've been reading and studying and following God. Some of you have been following God for 20, 30, 40 years. Don't lose it in 2020. And that's what King Saul did. And when he did, the Amalekite stood there with the crown, with his, stole his authority, took his authority, his reward, everything he had worked for, and he stood there. King David, on the other hand, is beginning to rise and he is now getting ready to sit on his throne for the first time in 15 years uh, since he was first prophesied over by Samuel that he would be the king. And that's what 2 Samuel chapter 1 picks up. And it picks up with that Amalekite standing there and he's holding Saul's crown and he looks at David and he says, I have his crown. And he thought David was going to say, oh man, thank you. Uh, Mr. Amalekite for taking out my enemy. See, the Amalekite knew that David and Saul were enemies. They were rivals. He knew that. And he thought by bringing the crown to David that David would reward him. He thought that David, all that stuff about not throwing the spears back, all that stuff about being a man after God's own heart, when it really counted, when he really faced a serious trial, this Amalekite thought David was going to be just like everybody else and say, oh man, he finally got what he deserved. Thank you, Mr. Amalekite, and blessed him with money and took that crown. 
But this chapter in 2 Samuel said that's not what happened. David looked at him and he says, you fool. That's not a rumor when you heard that I don't pick up uh, spears and throw them back. He wasn't my enemy. I might have been his enemy, but that's not how I fight my battles. I gave him to God and God removed him. And because you didn't fear the Lord and you touched God's anointed, your own words will condemn you. And he had that Amalekite executed right there on that spot in this chapter. And David demonstrates the, that he was ready for leadership. Please listen to this message today because this is something that's going to pertain to every single one of us over and over and over again. That's what we've been doing. We've been studying David's life because these are life lessons that he had to learn. And God said, I'm going to leave them in the Bible because it's life lessons that we all must learn. Even through this bizarre, crazy, uncertain season that we are in today. These are truths that from, are from God's Word that we need to lean into and, and study. And this is the season where we, we can't pretend to be a Christ follower. We've got to be a Christ follower. Do you hear what I'm saying? we we got to hold on. we got to follow. We've got to lean in. Because only then will we find the power and the Spirit of God. We'll find life in God. We won't find life in, so, in anything else, in social media or the headlines. Lord knows that. It's only in God, and David knew that. But David demonstrated that he was ready for leadership because he passed the ultimate test, and that is forgiveness. And he writes a song. He actually writes a song in honor of his enemy, Saul. You, you believe that. Verse 17. Have you ever written a song in honor of the person that hurt you. Don't want you to just put yourself in this story. How many's ever been hurt by somebody? Come on, every hand ought to go up, everybody watching live stream. You're gonna be hurt, you're gonna be disappointed. And it usually comes a lot of times from people that we don't expect. Let me just say this, sometimes one of the most powerful messages I've ever heard was by John Brevere. He's got a whole book out called The Bait of Satan. And some of this that we learned from listening to him preach that and when we first became Christians and God was dealing with us about unforgiveness and forgiveness, a lot of it was forgiving ourselves. And so that book really just helped us. But I'll, I'll never forget some of the stuff that he brought out in that uh, lesson that he was teaching about how enemy, the enemy will try to take, let us take the bait uh, that he puts out before us. And that bait is offense, is, is to become offended. Because he knows if we become offended, that the work of God will cease that he's doing in our life. Because we, we, are, we are offended, and it turns to bitterness, and it turns to anger. And that's exactly what the enemy tried to do with David. But he had another thing coming. David learned to keep his heart right when the world was going all wrong. And he learned this. And, and so sometimes you'll hear people say this, man. Uh, the church, they hurt me. You know, the world treats me better than them in the church. How many's ever heard that? And th this is what that means, because a lot of times we have an expectancy for the church up here, but the expectancy for the world is way down here. And so when somebody in the church or somebody in our family or closest to us hurts us, we're offended by that much. The ones closest to us can hurt us the most. And Saul was so close to David, he was his, supposed to be his mentor, but when he turned on him, it hurt him the most. But David was able to... Even though, like I said, all of us just looked at our hand that we've been hurt. Have you, can you get to the place where you can write a song in honor of them? I mean, this kind of blows our mind. That's exactly what he did here. In verse 17, it says, Then David lamented, 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. Then David lamented with this lamentation, which is a, a song of tears. Lamenting means to weep and to, be, and to cry. And he lamented over Saul. See, many people say, no, he, he, this whole song is about Jonathan. No, it's not. It's about Saul and Jonathan. It says it right here. He lamented over Saul and over Jonathan, his son, because him and Jonathan were covenant brothers. And listen to verse 18. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. That's what this is called. In Jewish tradition, this song is still there, and it's called the song of the bow. Because, let me just give you a little reference, because Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin, and the Benjamites were known for being archers. They were extremely accurate archers. 
and they were known for, you put a bow in the hand of a Benjamite, he's going to take you out. And so Saul was a Benjamite. And so David gives honor to him and his legacy in this psalm, and despite what he had done to David. you got to remember, this Saul costed David 15 years of his life. 15 years of his life he's running, living in villages, eating food that wasn't nothing. It was just surviving, dodging spears, rumors that were being started about David, all of this. For years and years and years he's doing it. And here we got him taken out in a Malachite for taking his crown. And he writes this beautiful song. But I love verse 18. Indeed, it is written in the book of Jasher. But he says, teach it to the children. Teach it to the children. Why? That stood out to me. Because he didn't want the next generation to be filled with bitterness. He didn't want the next generation to take on the weight of being offended and angry and bitter against an enemy that he, his, the first generation had to deal with. Man, do we, what happened to forgiveness? What happened to, you don't hear that in our culture today about forgiving one another, about being reconciled to one another. It's all about getting even. It's about what you did to me and what you did to my people and my past. And it's about all of this that we hear today. But David is saying, no, I want to teach this to our children. If you're writing some things down, on Thursday at our fast, God begin to just drop some of these quotes and these things in my mind. I want you to write them down. The first one, here, David knew that the next generation, he knew this and he didn't want the next generation to know this. And that is the only thing harder than forgiveness is living with unforgiveness. David knew it's hard to forgive. Absolutely no one ever said it's easy. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's easy to take up our cross and follow him. Nowhere in the Bible does it say it's going to be easy. But he knew that what's harder than that is to live with unforgiveness. You become toxic, and this whole next generation would have just hated the whole family of Saul. Some, Saul, some of these, these, uh, these offenses can be handed down in families. Have you ever seen that? And families are just so madder. We, we, there's this reality show called The Hartfield and McCoys. There's these two families way back down in the deep south. What is that story all about? Two families that feuded over, and it just passed on to the next generation and to the next generation. They just, all they knew when they were growing up is to love this and to love that and also hate this family. And that bitterness can be just taught right on down without us even realizing. Let me tell mom and dad, our children aren't really going to be uh, taken away, impressed by our church attendance or things like that. But they watch how we walk through some of these seasons and these offenses and these spears and these situations. They're watching how we do that. And only by God's grace can we do it. No one's perfect, but by God's grace, I'm going to get to that. This, I'm going to show you how we're able to do that. But God wanted to make sure that David wasn't still wounded, listen to this, when God put him into leadership. He wanted to make sure that the wound was now a scar. Why is that important? Because when we're still wounded and we're trying to lead, we'll just inflict our pain on those that are following us. Trying to help us today overcome something. We'll just inflict that pain on everybody. I don't want to be a wounded parent. I don't want to be a wounded pastor. I don't want to be a wounded leader. I don't want to become toxic. And you got to watch when you go through a storm that you don't let the storm get in you. You hearing me today? When we, we are going to have storms, it's going to come against us and our families. We're in one now in 2020. It's just crazy. They're going to come. But we got to realize, we got to pay attention and don't allow the storm to get in us because every relationship we go to, every next job, every next person, every next situation that we go to, we're going to bring that wound with us and inflict that pain on other people. God knew that about David. And the whole kingdom of Israel would become bitter because the leader was bitter, though. The leader was still wounded. Now, let me say this to you we're all going to be wounded, it's all going to hurt. But we got to give time for God to heal us. We got to give time for God to heal that wound and turn it into a scar. That's why when Jesus appeared to Thomas, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe unless I, unless I see his hands. And in John chapter 20, Jesus came right through the locked doors to Thomas. And what did he say? He said, Thomas, put your hands where my scars are, where the nails used to be. 
And he, what, what is he saying that? There's a difference between a wound and a scar. And he said, listen, I want you to see that there's no more nails. Some of us are still acting like the nail is still there. Jesus didn't come through going, oh, man. And they said, what's wrong with you? And he said, man, I got nails in my hands and feet. Listen, I thank God that he rose from the dead, but I thank God that he kept the scars. Because it's by keeping the scars and showing people, we demonstrate the power and the grace of God in our lives, not like the world. And David looked at Amalekite, that Amalekite and he says, you thought I was going to act like you and, and reward you for that crown, but you were a fool. I don't fight my battles like that. I want you to see there's no more scars. I don't, it, don't, it don't sting me no more. I've, God has healed me and I've made it through that season of my life. Hear me today. And that's what Jesus is saying to Thomas. There's no more, no more nails been healed. I got the scar. The scar is going to be there. But I was wounded. But God has, God has helped me with that. Unforgiveness, it's gonna, it would hold us back. It will hold you back. Because moving forward on the outside requires letting go on the inside. Please get this today. Moving forward. David went through all of those tests. And now he makes it to this chapter in 2 Samuel chapter 1. If you read four verses later, he finally sits on the throne. But it's not before this part right here. He, he knew that in order to move forward on the outside, you do got to let go on the inside. Letting go from the heart. When you really forgive somebody, you release them of all obligations. Man, they don't owe you anything. You'll see later when we get to David's reign that he wasn't looking for the house of Saul to give him anything. In fact, he turned it around and said, is there anyone left in the house of Saul that I can bless? And he blessed Mephibosheth. But it goes on in this song, and just the first two verses is what we'll read. You could read the whole song later. It's, it's awesome. It says, the beauty of Israel, verse 19, the beauty, he calls him the beautiful. The beauty of Israel is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Then he says, tell it not in Gath. That's the capital of the Philistines. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. That's the temple of the Philistines. Lest the, daughter of the, the daughters of the Philistines rejoice. Lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. He says, I don't even want the enemies to get any satisfaction that they did take Saul out. I, I, I don't want to give them the satisfaction. This just like blows my mind. Because so many of us do have that attitude. Like, I finally get what they deserve. <laughs> Right? I read this scripture when I first got saved. There was some enemies of mine that I had. How many's got enemies? Amen. Amen. People that don't like you for not a cause. And, and I had some of them in my life. And I remember that I didn't fight back. And I just remember to just give them to God. God, they're dealing with, man, it's, they're driving me crazy. I'm just going to give them to you. And God began to deal with them. And I mean, they went through it, man. And the chastisings of God is real. And God began to, to go on them, and I, I felt a little inside me going, yeah, that's what they get. And then I read in Proverbs today, it says, uh, don't be joyous when God deals with your enemy, lest he be unpleased and turn his wrath from him to you. <laughs> Woo, I said, whoa, whoa, hold up. And, and that changed my attitude real quick. And I began to have to pray for them. We'll get to that here in a minute. Really letting go. But David, I want you to see this. Again, this isn't a, a fairy tale, a guy, well, you don't know what I went through. You're going to see this. Letting go from the heart. Look what Jesus said in Mark 11. He says, and whenever you stand praying in worship service, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That's, what? So that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. And in Matthew 18, he adds, forgive them from your heart. Well, Pastor Eddie, you don't, you don't know what they've done to me. I, I think we've forgotten what we've done to Jesus. In fact, a person who can't forgive is a person who has forgotten what they've been forgiven of. The times when, when I don't like to forgive and, man, 
today we can be offended by so much. And another reason why I preach this because I didn't put those scriptures up. But when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, what is, what is it going to be like in the last days right before your return? He lists a lot of things. And one of them says, in the last days, many will become offended. And they will be divided and hate one another. That's what he said. I actually showed that scripture in last week's message. But he says, hold on to what you have until the end. Th because this is where we are as a society. This is where we are as a people. Is that we are getting into the flesh. We're learning to fight these battles the wrong way. And that's not the way God has called us, the church, to fight. Let God fight our battles. Let God deal with what's going to happen out there with the election and this virus. And who's telling the truth? What do you believe? Who do you, I don't know who, I, who to believe out there, but I know you can believe God. You can believe God's word. Come on, give me praise for that. And a lot of times when we struggle with forgiving, I think it is, we forget what we've been forgiven of. I know this has helped me and forgiven myself when I begin, begin to follow the Lord. I, I would feel so condemned standing in church. I would have a flashback of some things I did and the ways I've lived and the choices I made. And even when God began to open doors and put me in the ministry, I thought, God, first job was a youth pastor. For 11 years, we served as youth pastors. And my first thing was when dad and mom asked me, I said, I can't be a youth pastor. I didn't serve God in my youth. That's when I really went crazy. And mom said, God can use you, Eddie. Don't, don't, don't worry about where you've been. Look at where you are. God's done an awesome work in your life. Use that as a testimony and, and get these kids on fire for God. God can use you. How many thank God for people like your mama and people in your life that speak, speak life? You could do it. You could do it. But a lot of times you've you got to learn to forgive yourselves. And that's what the whole thing of the cross that we talk about. And communion Sunday is next Sunday. I thought about doing it this week because it fits so good. And that's what communion is all about. When we take of it next Sunday, where we, Jesus said, do it often. So you remind yourself of what I've what I done for you. What I've done for you. And if you're here and you're watching online and you're struggling with anything, hear me crystal clear. God can forgive you. He's got grace and mercy. He can forgive you of all your sins. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise for his forgiveness. His forgiveness, his grace, his mercy. His mercy is new every day. His grace is new. And that's why in the New Testament, Jesus come along with teaching higher standards. Remember, he said, in the, you have heard it said in the days of old that if you kill one another, he called it murder. But he said, now I say to you, if you hate one another, it's the same as murder. What did he do? He took the Old Testament law where you actually had to commit the act of murder to be called a murderer. And he lifted the standard and said, if you've got hate in your heart for another person, you are a murderer. Why did he raise the standard? Because he went to the cross and paid the price and gave us grace to do it. Is this making sense today? That's what New Testament believing God is all for. Because he gave us the grace to forgive one another. Amen. We can't hate one another. We, that hate has no place in the heart of a believer. Amen. No matter how people may treat you and act and come against you. We got racial division in our country. Let me tell you, racism is out of the pit of hell. It's a sin right out of the pit of hell. The Bible condemns it. It says, how can you... How can you say you love God who you can't see and you hate your brother who you can see? I mean, we put that scripture on our t-shirts because it's so profound. It's so clear and basic. It's simple. God never intended for us to be divided. He's the one that came and brought us, tried to bring us all together. Man, there's so much in that. That's what Jesus ushered in, a kingdom, a kingdom of us loving one another how do you do this, Pastor Eddie? How do you do this? How do you forgive? Yeah, it's by God's grace. This isn't in there, but you need to write it down. You forgive by faith and not by feelings. You forgive by faith and not by feelings. Scripture never says do what you feel. We have a society that says do what you feel. Love who you feel. Be who you feel. If that was... 
If I was told that at seven years old, I would be Spider-Man flying on a unicorn. That's what I felt like. We got the most bizarre teachings today. Do what you feel. You kidding me? Some of us would have made, had three car accidents today on the way to church. <laughs> you feel like slapping somebody. How many felt like the spirit of slap come over you the last week? Come on, somebody. Be honest. You in church today. Do what you feel. Come on, if that's supposed to be the way to do it. Huh? See, it's a, such a contradictory. The Bible never tells us that, how to do, do what you feel. The Bible tells us to die how you feel daily. <laughs> die daily. And, man, it's hard. It's hard. I, I've learned to get on social media real quick just to like a couple posts, say happy birthday, happy anniversary, and get off. Hallelujah. Get in and get out. Because if I watch this video, watch that meme, and listen to them going, what, what? And he's sitting there, here, here you go. Here goes that flesh. Come on, get him. Is it just me? Jesus, help us. David had to forgive Saul, and here's the thing. David never had an opportunity to reconcile with Saul. Saul died. And maybe somebody has hurt you in your life, and they have passed on, or they're not, you don't even know where they are, and you're not able to forgive them. How do you forgive? You do it like David did. He did it by faith. And he, did, he didn't do it by his feelings. He did it by faith. How are we going to make it through 2020? By faith. The just shall live by faith. That's how we do it, by faith. And faith is opposite of feelings. Feelings gets us in all kinds of trouble. I told you last week, that's what an Amalekite was. It was all about feelings that are descendants of Esau. They did everything by what they felt. That's what, not what God has called us to do. But you learn how to forgive. Watch, this is so simple. You learn how to forgive by forgiving. You learn how to forgive by simply forgiving. That's why David was teaching it to the children when they're young. Because if you don't learn how to forgive over the little things, you won't be able to forgive over the big things. Please hear me today. If you can't learn to forgive over the little things, someone didn't say hi. And they, yeah, they did. They just had a mask on. You can't even get offended today. Well, you know, whatever. We, if you, we don't learn to forgive over the little things, we won't be able to forgive over the big things. And God, David wanted to teach this to the little children. You do this little by little by forgiving them that has offended us. Learn to forgive Learn to constantly give them to God. Why? Because it builds up spiritual strength in our heart. It builds up spiritual stamina and tenacity in our spirit. Remember Matthew 18 when Peter came to Jesus and said, Jesus, how often shall I forgive my brother when they sin against me? And he said, I'll forgive them up to seven times. Look at Peter. He's thinking he's doing good. I'm going to forgive him. He answered the question before Jesus had a chance. Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother when he said, seven times? I'm going to do it seven Y'all know what he said. Jesus said, no, I don't tell you seven times, but 70 times seven in one day. We ain't heard this in a long time. Why did he say that? Because it builds up spiritual strength to forgive. It's like, it's like a guy that goes to the gym. You can walk up and you can hit him. Tomas was here. I may have him come up, but anyway. You hit him real hard, boom. I mean, it hurts. It hurt him. It pushed him back, but he recovered. You get someone who never goes to the gym. You hit him, he'll be laying down for a couple days. <laughs> like many of us when we came out of quarantine. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, the difference was one was in shape. It's the same thing spiritually. If you learn to forgive over the little things when you go through life, if you learn to continue to give that enemy to God, I'm going to give them to you, God. Yeah, they mistreated me. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt the guy when he got pushed and he's fit. It never said it didn't hurt. It hurt. It stung. It knocked him back. It knocked him off his balance for a minute. But he's in shape because he's been forgiving his enemies for a long time. And he said, I can take this the same as I did before. That's why Jesus said forgive 70 times 7. And that's why David was able to forgive because remember, he's been forgiven Saul for 15 years. For 15 years he's been forgiven Saul. Everybody else was trying to tell David to kill Saul. Remember when he went into the cave? And in the cave of En Gedi, the Bible says God put Saul and his men in a deep sleep. 
And David came in there, and David had a warrior named Abishai. And Abishai was a fierce warrior. And he said, David, God has put your enemies to sleep. Take them out. Here's a, and, and, and David said, no, I'm not going to do it. Abishai took a spear, and he said, come on, just say the word, I'll do it. Come on, just say the word, I'll take them out. He's your enemy. You should be sitting on the throne right now. You should be so further in life right now. But what he did to you has stunted your growth. It has hurt you. It has caused you pain. And for years you've had to deal with what this man did to you, David. Just give me the word. I'm going to take him out. Wow. That happened. That happened. And David said, no, the last time I came close, I just cut a piece of his garment. And the Holy Spirit convicted me. I'm not going to touch God's anointed. Got to deal with my enemy. And if you've got an enemy today, if you've got an enemy today, and it's a, it's a spiritual thing, by the way. The Republicans aren't your enemy. The Democrats aren't your enemy. Joe Biden is not your enemy. Donald Trump is not your enemy. That went over really well. You see how way down we are? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Remember that? Oh, that's supposed to be pre-2020. We live by that in 2019, but 2020, Pastor Eddie, we're down here in the real deal. Yes, we are, and God is right there with us. Come on. We're living it. We got to live it. We're living it. What you doing today, Pastor Eddie? I'm giving you a workout. I'm giving you a workout. I'm spotting you today. Come on, you can lift it up a little bit. Some of you are like, eh, that's why I didn't want to come today. It was all raining. He's talking about forgiveness. He has no idea what that man did to me. And I'm saying, come on, lift it up. You can do it. You can do it. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do it. God's grace is in you. You can do it. Pastor Eddie, we're supposed to put it on a T-shirt, not live it. It's easier to dress like a Christian than live like one. I'm trying to help us today. Listen, yesterday we went to a funeral service of a mighty man of God, Pastor Earl Brown. If it wasn't for that man, I don't think I'd be here today. Help my mom and dad get saved and get them on the right track. He was hard. I called him Colonel, Colonel Brown. I, I, he just, I remember when I was first losing a little bit of my hair. Let me just tell you how he was. And I, was, I became a Christian when I was 25, and I was losing my hair. My hair was just like falling out. I came to his house with my mom and dad to drink some coffee. We were going to hang out and have a Bible study. And I had uh, some hairspray. I, had some, I was trying. And the first thing he said to me, he said, boy, you're trying anything to hold on to that hair, ain't you? <laughs> We need some people in our lives sometimes to just, to just humble us real quick. That's how he was. You talk about picking up a spear and throwing it back, boy. I wasn't saved that long. Come on, somebody. I know. That's what this, this man did. And, but he said this. He said to me, he said, Eddie, this is what I tell everybody. He said, I'm hard, but if you can make me, you're going to make it out there because the world is hard. And I listened to his daughter, Tina, stood up, and she just lost her son, and they're just in a season of grieving right now. We're praying for the Brown family, and Tina and Roberto, I grew up with these guys. And he said that one thing my dad did, he wasn't the richest man, he didn't leave us a lot of riches, but he, he taught us how to overcome trials and tribulations. And, he's, and she's crying with a mask on. She says, I'm, I like wearing a mask because I'm going to get sloppy crying and you can't tell. But she said, Mom and Dad, don't get caught up in what you can give your kids what you can leave your kids, what, what you can leave to them, but what you can leave in them. And she says, my dad gave us and taught us to have eternal life. He taught us how to walk with integrity and to follow God and to make it through when storms come and when times get tough. My dad taught us to buck up, that's what she said. And we need that kind of talk. Yeah, we need to weep with those that are mourning. And what many of us may be in a season of that, that, yeah, absolutely, but there comes a time, 2020 is the kind of year where we need some real talk and to say, hey, man, life is unfair. It is unfair that Jesus had to go to a cross and die for my sins. It was unfair that they spit on him, they pulled his beard out, they beat him for what I did. That wasn't fair. 
But if he did it for me, and he's given me the grace, then I can forgive my enemies. That's why Jesus said to build up that, to, to remember you're getting a workout. That's why he said pray for your enemies. Pray for those that mistreat you. Nowhere in the Bible did Jesus say pray for you, your friends. Pray for your mom. Jesus never, you should pray for your mom. Mama needs prayer. All the mamas said amen. But Jesus said, why did he not say pray for your mama? Because that doesn't build spiritual strength. You go in and you pick up six ounces, yeah, Whew. then you get mad at how come you're not seeing any results? Because Jesus said, I'm trying to prepare you, the last day church, is to, is to for, learn to forgive your enemies, and you do it by, forget, by praying. You may pray with a lump in your throat, and David prayed this before, oh God, knock their teeth out and let me watch. David prayed that in one of his psalms. How many's ever been there? How many's there right now? But you got to keep reading that song. And he says, oh, God, forgive me. My heart wasn't right. And he began to change his attitude when he went into the house of the Lord. And he remembered God and remembered his grace. I'm starting to close. I know this is, this is a spiritual workout. Hey, we're in a gymnasium. But we pray, over our, pray with our, for our enemies and those that hurt us. Pray for them, God. Bless them. And you see you'll start to get released from all of this pain and all of this bitterness that seems to be in our heart. Now, as I said, this was the last thing that David did before he sat in the throne. It's that, I believe it's placed in Scripture here for a purpose. Look at chapter 2, verse 1. And it happened, what's the next two words? After this. Underline that. And it happened after this. This After what? After he wrote a song and released Saul publicly in front of everybody. That David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the cities of Judah? And the Lord answered him back and said, Go. Forgiveness clears the clogs of our communication with God. It was right after that that David then sat on the throne a few verses later after that he sat on the throne for the very first time when after this he's trying to help us today this is a, a lesson that we've got to be reminded of to constantly give them to God man constantly give people to God because having that bitterness in our life I've always said this it's like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die it's just toxic it's toxic and the enemy's trying to just get us so weighed down. And God says, man, I can't use you if you're weighed down with bitterness. And then come on, give it to God. Give it to God today. Come on, let's stand right now to our feet. And I want you to do what David did many times. And he just gave his enemies. That's why David said, though I walk through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What? You prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. That's not just a beautiful little psalm we read at a funeral. That's exactly how David, because you can't eat and enjoy your food with contention at the table. You ever sit down and you're in an argument with your spouse and you're trying to eat a good meal? It could be your favorite meal. You ain't going to enjoy it. You're going to be... <clears throat> I'm going to eat later. <laughs> I mean, know what I'm talking about. This takes your appetite. That's how it is. And listen, you can't enjoy what God's doing around us right now. God is doing some amazing things right now. But all we, but all we see is enemies and division and, and COVID-19 and all of this. I know we're in a crazy year, but let me tell you something. You can, if you're walking with God as David did, you can walk through the valley of the shadow of 2020 and fear no evil because he is with you. He'll prepare a table right in the middle. And you'll be able to look at your enemy and be like, what's up? Be some butter with your bread. What did the scripture say? Give compliments and bless your enemy for it's like heaping hot coals over their head. A soft answer turneth away wrath. I mean, how many scriptures do we need in the scripture? But it's so hard, Pastor Reddy. I know it is. That's why we got to be remember, we reminded of what Jesus did for us today. Maybe your worst enemy right now is yourself and you're trying to go ahead, but... Voices and echoes of the past keep coming up. 
right now I want you to get free in this service. Right now you're joining us online. You got an enemy right now. I want you to give him to God. You might have given it to him many times, but you keep taking him back. Come on, we're going to give it to God today. This rainy day, wherever you're watching from, here in Michigan, it's a, it's a rainy day. It's, it's kind of down. Our governor has, has issued another mandate, and we're just, we don't know how long this is going to last. And, but I want you to know that God is still working. He is still moving. His spirit is still moving. Many of you have rededicated your life to the Lord even last week. God bless you. People are being healed and touched by God. God is doing an amazing things. That's what we're going to focus on today. That's what you need to focus on, what God is doing. And give him that enemy right now. Father, we just release this person to you as David did. Hallelujah. Come on, you can even call their name out right now. And if you got a mask on, they won't even hear it anyway. I mean, no. But seriously, I want you to, to give that person to God right now. Come on, give that family member, maybe that co-worker, that neighbor. Come on, give them to God right now. As David gave Saul to you, oh God, we want to we wanna give our enemies to you right now. Father, we, we give you everything that's happening in this nation that's trying to divide us, God. We invite you into this situation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Release. Release. We release them to you right now. Your will be done in their life. Your will be done. Come on, you need to say that right now to your enemies. Your will be done in their life. You're going to feel yourself getting better and better as you say that. Your will be done in their life. I know they mistreated you. I know they, they lied. But come on, at the end, David was vindicated in front of everybody. He was lifted up. Don't lose sight of that today. Don't lose sight of that today. In Jesus' name, you may need to pray this all week. If the Spirit of God is dealing with you, whenever you're watching this, whether you're watching it today or later on, and you've got, you got an enemy in your life that's really just causing pain and harm to you, and it's hard for you to move forward, please listen to this message. Remember what you've been forgiven of. Remember there's grace there. And remember that living with unforgiveness is harder than forgiving. Let him go from your heart today. Forgive us. Jesus said, pray this every single day. Forgive me my sin as I forgive others who sin against me. What's he saying? Work out today. Get your spiritual work out today by letting them go. Come on. Let them go in this service right now. Let them go in Jesus' name. Pastor Eddie, they're not even here today. They passed away. Release them by faith right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them go. Let them go. Come on. You need to type that in the chat. If you can, I'm letting them go. I'm letting them go. I'm letting them go. I'm letting them go. Come on. Let them go. Throw aside every weight and sin of what's slowing you down in 2020. Come on. Come on. That's why some of your prayers may have been bouncing off the wall. Some of the scripture heads have been speaking to you lately. You find yourself in some kind of wilderness right now. It's that unforgiveness that's holding you back. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go so you can run. So you can run. Jesus. Jesus. I release them. Release them. You're watching today, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You need, to forgive your, you need forgiveness in your life. You can be forgiven right now where you are. Ask Jesus to forgive you. Say these words. Say, Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me. Come on, say it. I ask you to forgive me, God. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all of them. Wash me clean. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, give God some praise. Take it by faith and not by feelings. In Jesus' name.
I just want to say thank you for watching. Hopefully you've been blessed by this. I know I am so blessed and excited to preach it. Uh, King David is just one of my guys in the Bible that has helped me through so many areas of my life. And through 2020, we, we need to keep a right heart when the world goes all wrong, right? And hopefully uh, you've been able to glean some important principles from the life of King David. You know, God left us 66 chapters on King David, more than any other person in the Bible. And I think he did that on purpose. Uh, so if you have received ministry and been blessed uh, or have given your life to the Lord uh, and prayed the prayer of faith with us, we'd love to hear from you. You can drop us an email. Uh, also, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And also hit that little icon, that bell icon there, so you'll be notified of upcoming events. we got a lot of things planned for late summer and early fall, and you want to know what's going on. And also, if you'd love to support the ministry, there's three ways to give and help us continue to minister this way with all the technology and everything. I want to say thank you for those that have been supporting the ministry. I know God's been blessing you, because uh, whenever we put Him first, and we put His kingdom first, and we support His kingdom, he always will bless us. Amen. So again, it's Pastor Eddie just saying thank you for watching uh, us today, and we pray you have a blessed week.